are more men looking to become Catholic priests? And how is the church integrating lay people into the ministry? Joining us for this discussion and to update us on the mission of the acclaimed Christ the King Seminary is our friend, Father Joe. Welcome, Father Joe. Great to be here. Oh, Thank you for having me back. It's so nice to have you here. And of course, you are a local Western New York guy. You grew up in Dunkirk. Correct. And here you've stayed in the Western New York area and you're, you know, you're, you're really caring for Western New York. I have to be honest with you, when I think of what we do, what I do as a priest or what I do as a president rector at Christ the King Seminary, I think in terms of the whole of Western New York. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't just think of, you know, the Catholic community or a local parish, but I think of all of Western New York. It's eight counties and the incredible gift that we have, you know, of the environment, the culture, the integration of different people and experiences, what's happening in downtown Buffalo. And I believe that the church and particularly Christ the King can be a part of that. Sure, absolutely. I, I think that everything that you do here in Western New York is so important to Western New York. And now, how long have you been in this position at Christ the King? I'm beginning my third full year. That's and it's exciting. amazing how quickly it's gone, That's you know? exciting. Yeah. And how did last year go? It went very well. And you know, they always say that when you take over a new position or you start a new ministry or you become a pastor somewhere, and as president rector, it takes a year or two, it's usually the third year where you begin to see some of the hopes and the dreams mm -hmm. because you transition, you reorganize, you bring in some new people, you bring out the wisdom of some of the people that were already there before you got there. And I have to say, as we begin this third year, I begin to see the growth and what I'm very happy about, a deeper an awareness that Christ the King is here in the Diocese of Buffalo mm -hmm. in so many different ways. And we talked beforehand about the uh, do people really know what Christ the King is all about? Right, you right. Know? The tradition is, of course, we have a seminary. Therefore, we prepare men for the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And that is our primary focus. But do you realize that last year we had over 10,000 people come to campus? That's tremendous. Across the board, we have lectures, retreats, graduate courses, dinner lecture series. You know, people come for conferences. They come for a day of prayer. They come just to share. So it's 10,000 people coming to campus primarily for some form of learning. Some form of learning, some spiritual awakening, spiritual direction, a conference. Uh, we have different groups coming out who mm -hmm. utilize our facilities. Uh, they come out for lectures, a group, women's group. We have a number of inner city elementary students who come out during the summer. The boys come one week and the girls come the other. And they have events and experiences. And are these events only for people who are Catholic? No, absolutely not, no. Obviously our primary focus, we are a Catholic institution mm -hmm. and we want to spread the message of who we are as a Catholic church. Oh no, absolutely not. Uh, we have groups, and I think I can say this, we have AA groups who come, you know, diversity. We have a variety of people, um, you know, Pentecostals. We have a Korean group that comes, Musicians who come during the summer and take over the campus because they have concerts and all those kind of things. So really, you're just you're just a great resource for the religious community as a whole here in Western New York. And what we hope, right? What we're hoping for is that we provide an opportunity, an environment for an encounter with themselves, with their God, with each other kind of an awakening of our deeper calling, no matter what tradition we are, mm -hmm. that we have a responsibility to provide it. And Bishop Malone, in his decision to move forward with Christ the King, when he arrived four years ago, talks about Christ the King as being the heart of the diocese in so many different ways. Yes, it's educational. Yes, it's spiritual. But it's also a place where people can come to understand themselves. How do we fit in to the remaking of the Western New York area into Buffalo. That's that's exciting. Oh, it's that's wonderful. really exciting. So, I got the best job in the Diocese of Buffalo. <laughs> I really. That's, that's great that you have that approach because that means that this new year, your third year where you're coming into your own is gonna be an exciting year. Right. So what's new this third year? Well, we did something really new, particularly for the seminarians. Um, I decided that we do a lot of academic training. We do a lot of liturgical training, personal training. They have spiritual direction. But there was a piece or what I call the glue seemed to be missing. We did a spiritual summer. We wanted to awaken that deeper spiritual life so that it could animate everything that our seminarians would do one day as priests. So what we did, we had two days of orientation on the general spiritual life. We had an eight day silent directed Ignatian retreat, three weeks of immersion in the classic writers like Francis de Sales, Teresa of Avila, and then we took them to the Holy Land for 12 days to walk the way of Jesus. And I think that it brought together the whole program. And we're looking to extend that to maybe the diaconate community who studies at the seminary, to lay people, to the priests of the diocese, to realize that underneath who we are, 
that we have to awaken that deeper spiritual calling that animates us. And isn't that what our society really needs mm -hmm. today? For sure, for sure. And I, um, I know that typically, you know, when people generally think of a seminary, a Catholic seminary, they, um, they tend to assume it's really geared towards men. What, are, what do you have on your campus for women? How do women fit into that picture? Well, obviously, uh, the call to priesthood is to men, mm -hmm. and that is what the church believes and maintains. But we have a school, we're a school of theology. You know, we have women and men, uh, women religious and religious brothers or other priests who come for graduate courses. If you're looking for a degree in graduate studies, you are welcome to come to Christ the King. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be Catholic, you can be of another tradition. And I would say that of the 80 uh, graduate students we have, I would say that almost 40 to 50 percent of those are women. We have days of prayer and retreat for women. We have, you know, discernment days, book reading clubs that come out there. We have a variety of different things, uh, involvement. This year, uh, actually last year, I added to our staff Eileen Warner as director of pastoral outreach and mission for the seminary. She meets the group, she works with the groups, she's coordinating throughout the diocese a variety of different programs. And how do we have people realize that Christ the King is more than just the seminary, but it's for everyone. And where do you stand on marriage and priesthood? Oh my gosh, you've just taken a right turn. Obviously, <laughs> my personal opinion, it's above my pay grade to uh -huh. make any changes. But I certainly think the church is awakening itself to the real dignity of women and a realization of their call to ministry in the church. Uh, I think Pope Francis has been quite clear about that. He just initiated a study on the role of the deacon and women in the church. Uh, in terms of the call to priesthood, at this point the church believes and maintains that men are called to priesthood. As President Rector and as a Catholic priest, I certainly hold and maintain that. But yet there are so many incredible gifts that the church, and I think Pope Francis has done a marvelous job awakening that among us. Uh, it's not just, oh, by the way, it's the very essence of the church that the dignity of a woman will animate the gospel and bring it alive in, in a powerful way. And I have to tell you that one of the things that we're very conscious of, the majority of people that our seminarians or the deacon candidates will work with in the church, we're going to be women in the parishes who do some wonderful things, mm -hmm. animate mm -hmm. the church in a thousand different ways. Bishop Malone uh, has actually in the establishment of parish uh, administrators, parish life administrators, I mean there are a number of women who have taken over parishes in the absence of priests and they're running parishes and uh, we have sacramental priests who go in and do the liturgy but they're doing a marvelous job around the diocese. And so what are you, what are you doing, what is uh, the Catholic Church as a whole doing to encourage more men to actually go into the priesthood? Well, the Diocese of Buffalo has certainly put the full court press on. We have a wonderful new vocation director, Andrew Lorisella, Father Walter Sesney had been. Uh, we are fortunate. The numbers in the Diocese of Buffalo, uh, I would say 15 years ago, we had 14 total. You know, this year we have 35 guys. Oh, that's a huge we increase. We have 35 at Christ the King, and we have seven at St. Mark's College Seminary. The Diocese of Buffalo is just short by one person of having 40 seminarians, and that is wonderful for us. But you know, you can write the programs, you can do the song, you can do the dance, you can encourage people. Invitation is important, and I think that invitation by lifestyle. I think what Pope Francis is doing is connecting the message to the way he lives his life yes. is the best vocation invitation that you can get. I think that a parent needs to ask their son or their daughter to consider ministry in the church. I think the call to priesthood happens when a priest decides to see someone in the parish and say, what about you? Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell you how many guys who say to me, Father, I'm here because so-and-so asked me. And they also see authentic living by their priests, by their parents, by their families. And the layperson's role is probably more important than ever. Oh, absolutely. And it's not the result of a lack of clergy. I think all too often people say, well, we don't have as many priests, therefore. No, the very nature of baptism calls us to be fully engaged in the church, whether it's as a lector, whether it's as a DRE, whether it's in, you know, proclaiming the message through being a catechist or working with the RCIA. Uh, everyone is called. One of my, my staff gets tired of it, but I constantly say to them, Christ the King, all are welcomed. Let God figure out what you're doing. I told you earlier that I think I'm the luckiest person going because I get to watch people encounter their call with the gift the seminary has to offer and they follow. And whether it's as a deacon, whether it's as a graduate student, as a woman who is going to be leading a parish, or a priest who's going to be ordained for the Catholic Church, 
it's an incredible experience. You're very passionate about what you do. Oh, I love it. And, Absolutely love and, it. And, and I'm sure that is a huge part of why you're so good at what you do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and uh, now you mentioned Pope Francis. And um, what is his impact in these crazy days with, you know, politics? And I mean, it's just, there's kind of upheaval everywhere. I think that um, Pope Francis is wonderful, by the way. But uh, how do you see him impacting society right now, where we're, where we're at with this election and with um, so many questioning religion and morals and what is a straight Is there an election ahead? going on? Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's a serious question that we have to ask ourselves on the bigger scheme. But when somebody like Pope Francis, everybody keeps saying, well, Francis is doing this and Francis is changing that. In fact, he's not. Mm -hmm. His lifestyle, the way he lives, is authentic. He is a pastor at heart. And I think the gift of our role as a church is that we live authentically. And one of the phrases that my seminarians get tired of me saying to them, he tells us we have to smell like the sheep. We have to live with God's people. We have to take them where they're at. We have to realize that they are struggling in the world, the political situation, the economic situation, the secularization, the things that go on the internet, the things that are going on on whatever. But we have to somehow stand there almost as a countercultural sign saying, the dignity of the human person is. The responsibility to protect women and their rights and their dignity is important. Francis does that, you know, without judgment. Mm -hmm. Let them come and see the message. It will speak for itself when it's lived authentically. So what does that mean for us as church? It means that we have to live authentically, whether you're a pastor in a parish, whether you're a seminarian, whether you're on a television program as a host, all of us are called to live the message authentically and then people will hear it and it will be transformative. And um, briefly, maybe you can tell us what are what are the goals of a seminarian? The goals of a seminarian or seminary? Seminary. Seminary. The goals of a seminary is to awaken and to cultivate one's call to ministry, whatever that may be. Obviously, it plants the seed. The word comes, the Latin word seminary, the seed, being planted in one's heart and feeling that God is calling you. So we have a responsibility to prepare them as persons, we have epistolically in terms of service, academically, uh, and a variety of different ways. And uh, what you know, we, we hear a lot about um, fundraising, and uh, hmm. you know, hey, every every not for profit has to deal with fundraising. Mm -hmm. And the Catholic Church, you know, you've got lots of different avenues that you take for fundraising. I know that you have. Um, Three, three uh, kind of large avenues. You've you've got parish fundraising upon this rock, and then Catholic charities. Mm -hmm. And I know that some critics of the church say, "Well, my gosh, they're always asking for money." Mm -hmm. And how do you how do you address that? Well, you know, you're never going to stop people from criticizing what they perceive or what they understand. We have day-to-day -day operational things. We have a mission to maintain. Catholic Charities is able to become what it is and taking care of the hundreds of thousands of people it takes care of every single year because of people's generosity. People that Christ the King doesn't take care of. We take care of a particular portion and section. We prepare ministers for Albion and Jamestown and we have a mission that needs to be supported. Upon this rock, which Bishop Malone and its success is really going very well, uh, is trying to position the Catholic Church for the future. What are the things that we're not doing? How can we re refocus ourselves? I would love to be able to say that we don't need your money, but Christ the King needs to do its annual operating budget. Mm -hmm. We need to maintain, mm -hmm. I need to bring on new faculty, I need to redo my classroom building, I need to make us more contemporary so that we can understand how we can effectively reach out beyond the 132 acres on Knox Road in East Aurora. Um, I think anyone who has a household understands that every year something has to be done, mm -hmm. something needs to be done. And the Western New York population being small in number, maybe they feel a little bit more of a crunch because maybe some of the same people are being asked. But when you choose your priorities in life, if you want good priests, if you want good ministers, if you want the church to thrive and its message to get out there, then you'll be generous because you know it's a priority not only for them, but for you. Well, and you know what? All of that fundraising, it really all goes right back into Western New York, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. Absolutely. And you do so 100%. much. You do so much here in Western New York that um, I think that a lot of Western New Yorkers actually feel very good, feel very comfortable when they're donating to Catholic Charities because it covers such a broad range of needs yeah. in multiple counties. I'm a strong supporter of Catholic Charities because I grew up with a strong tradition in my family. 
our Catholic Charities in Buffalo and Western New York is second to none in the whole country in terms of the amount of money that comes in and goes directly to services. And um, real quick, because I'm sure we're running out of time, what, um, what are you hearing from young people at Christ the King? I have to tell you, one of the things that I've been overjoyed with, one, is an increase of vocations and people coming forth, but most of our grad students are in their 20s and their 30s. There are people who are doing second career things. Uh, we have retreats, we have Kairos, you know, the different high schools come. I'm animated. I just got done talking with Bishop Malone at the airport because we were stuck in Boston, and he went to World Youth Day. 1.6 million people gathered together from all over the world praising God at a Catholic Mass with the Pope. He said it doesn't, I've never felt anything like it. Young people want to follow, they want to hear the message, but we have to do it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cultural signs that are different and contrary. There are a lot of different noises out there that people are being distracted by. That's why it's so important to have a Christ the King, mm -hmm. to form good ministers who know how to reach out, tell the story, and to be animated by the message of the gospel. Father oh. Joe, that's so encouraging. Yeah. That's just that's just so wonderful. So thank you so much, Father Joe. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. And if you'd like to get in touch with Father Joe or Christ the King Seminary, their website is cks.edu or call 716-652-8900.